Okay, lastly is, this, is the throttle position switch. Its connectors, it bolts on this way, connectors go downward, and it has three pin connectors on it. The center connector is the common and is the output. You're looking for either one of the outer ones to make contact, and this is actually two switches built into one. There's an idle contact, which is the right-hand one, and there's the full bore contact, is what I like to call it. It's when you really stuff your foot in it, and it tells the injectors to go very, very rich. When this is in, this is adjustable, and if you'll notice, there is an elongated slot on either side of the, of the switch itself, and that is bolted horizontally into the body of the throttle in two places. It takes a small Phillips head screwdriver, short one, loosen them both, and the, the test works like this. So it is okay to make adjustments to that? Yes. Okay, just for the ease of showing you what this is, I have a three-wire multi-contact pigtail, which will plug into this. This one here, we'll take and hook an ohm meter to, and this one over here is our full bore, and this one over here is our idle. I'll hook up the switch, I'll hook up the multimeter, and we'll see what that looks like. Shut that on. By the way, this cover is removable. It does have a tendency to get water down in it. If you ever wash your motor at a car wash, you're going to want to reach in here and pull these two little tabs off here, pull this out and let the water drain out the bottom. If this fills up with water, you're going to have literally a buck and bronco going home. And that is as in a horse. Better than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fun one. Okay, the negative contact would be hooked up to the center contact. And I'm going to just for grins and giggles here, hook this up to the idle contact. Now, when this comes back and touches, you've got a contact, and you can hear the audible tone. Now, this has an audible tone switch on it so that I can hook it up and check it and hear it even if I don't, can't see the display. So, it's a very sensitive, you see how little amount of movement it's making to make that idle contact work. So, from there, all we're doing with this test is physically verifying that the contacts are working. Then you take an off the idle contact side and go to the full bore side. Now you're going to move a long ways before you finally get into it. Oh, there it finally made. And it's showing 6.3 ohms. There's a little dirt and corrosion on that. It probably needs to be snapped a couple times, see if we can improve on that. 4.3, yes. And if worse comes to worst, a nice clean piece of paper like this. Simply put in the contact and then close the switch and rub it back and forth. You can hear the squeak and remove it and check it again, and we're down to one nine-tenths, eight-tenths ohm. Wow. Now that shows very clearly that the dirt in the contact, I don't know if you can see the dirt that was on that, but that's all the resistance that's necessary to make this switch not function. So when you get in to clean this, it, a dollar bill works great. It's got just the amount of abrasiveness and enough rag paper in it so that it doesn't tear up, but a good piece of, of, uh, carbon pa of uh, typing paper will clean the contacts. Okay, we'll go over and do the other one just for fun. If that other one was that dirty, we'll restrict this one and hook this one back up and we'll double check it. Now, this is where a digital volt ohm meter comes into, hand, into handy. You would not be able to do this. I'm sitting here on a, a 200 ohm scale, so we'll rub that one through there. And that other one was 9 tenths, 1.2. So, but again, that's not excessive. That's not bad. But if you get five or six or seven ohms of resistance up in there, it can cause low impedance signals like this. 8 tenths, 7 tenths, hey, we're heroes, we did it. Okay, so this switch is now good. Just for fun now, what we're going to do is this switch here on this car is already in place. This will just snap back on here. It's uh, start the ears and it locks in. There's a lock there, a lock there, and two down here. Start the, the bottom end first and this last. Now this has a half moon cutout in it that holds on to the switch so that the shaft can rotate the center portion of it. We'll go ahead and remove this switch and hook up our ohm meter to show you what it would, what this is correctly adjusted here now. So we just finished doing this car for the customer yesterday and they were gracious enough to let us use it today for the video. Okay, the idle contact. 
Watch how little movement is necessary to get it to come off the idle contact. That is the only, from there on, you want it, at this point, the, the, the portion of the fuel injection brain that is controlling the idle mixture is now out of the circuit and you're on the, the mid-range run circuit where the injectors will spray on the basis of the airflow meter. This overrides that signal and changes it so that you can get a richer mixture at idle than you would have otherwise. And a smooth transition between idle and mid-range is necessary by not using any more of the idle contact than is necessary. Try to get into that other circuit as soon as you can. Uh, and the book says somewhere around three to five degrees. Well, I have never found a good way to measure that many degrees, so I just kind of like to go something like that. It isn't that killer accurate in the first place. It doesn't have to be. But here's the other thing. If you want to know where your fuel, why the guy next door gets better mileage than you, it's probably because he doesn't drive as deep as his foot will go in the throttle. As the throttle continues to move downward, at the moment you hear this buzzer again, your gas mileage just went to 12 miles per gallon, right there. There's full throttle. That's approximately half throttle you're going to go into a full throttle mode. And the only way that's, that uh, you'll be able to avoid that is to take and disconnect this portion of it, and it will run lean, and you will be able to run it a lot more aggressively. I don't recommend it because you may get lean enough to burn valves. So again, your idle contact begins at the full back position, should quit just after you touch the throttle, and then you should have a mid-range, and then you should make contact on the other side. Where does the adjustability of that switch come into play? When you've hooked this up, and I'll leave that right there for the moment, and you've got your meters hooked on here, you've got this hooked up, and you've got your center, all you have to do is loosen the screws, and this will rotate about this center against these idles, uh, the two screws, and you just simply rotate this until you get the open closing signal to approximate what you've seen here. Now one word of caution here, on certain of the vehicles, especially uh, California models, this is not the same function. This actually controls timing and it is not the same test for this. If you have a California model in the very late model, 82, 83 ZX's, you're going to uh, have a completely different system. It's going to look identical to this, still have the contacts in it, but the easy way to tell is that your electronic ignition module will have an additional contact sticking out the end of it right here. And that is the one that interfaces with that switch. If you have that type of trignition, it's called uh, TRI, I-G-N-I-T-I-O-N, trignition module, which is bolted to the outside of your distributor with the extra contact, then this is not a throttle position switch anymore with an idle contact in it. It will have a timing contact. Mm -hmm. And we won't go into that because most of the time, that, that does not affect fuel injection. This is now a, an electronic ignition switch. So that's not the scope of this video. So we'll leave that where it's at. But if you have a late model one, it's easy to tell because it'll have a contact, a two wire contact sitting, coming out horizontally, and then it'll have the other two wires that come over the normal T-crossed spade terminals that would go over and hook up to your coil.